Hi guys. In this tutorial I'm going to uh, show you how I arrived at uh, achieving this uh, starfish lamp. Uh, I call it a starfish lamp because of the um, interlinking star shapes that make up the uh, uh, the shade here. Alright, so I'll just show you really quickly how to uh, how to get this kind of shape in 3ds Max. Okay, I'm using 3ds Max 2012. However, um, I'm going to uh, mention right up front that I'll be utilizing a uh, modifier plugin, uh, a free modifier plugin called Mega Bevel, um, to assist in uh, in the production here. Um, it's it's a terrific uh, modifier and. Um, I'll provide a link to it in the description of the video so that you guys can download it yourself and uh, and uh, get the benefits of it. Um, it's 100% free and it really makes short work of some complex extrusions and uh, rotation rotational extrusions and stuff like that. That uh, without it, it would be you know a little bit time-consuming and laborious to do it by hand. Um, so I highly recommend the uh, the plugin. It's fantastic and it's totally free. I believe it works with uh, 3ds Max 2011 and higher. So well worth the uh, time to download and install. Okay, and other than that, I I'll, I'll be using a quad chamfer as well. Um, if you have 3ds Max 2015. Uh, or higher then you already have quad chamfer in your tool set you know by default um, however in this case it, it is an add-on so all right <laughs> let's get to it so here we are in max and um, we'll go to extended primitives and we'll insert a hydra primitive into into the scene Okay, and uh, in this case, we're going to use the Dodec Icos family. All right, so once you have it set to that, you can go ahead and collapse to editable poly. All right, and real quick, I just, and I do this all the time, I'm just going to drop a, uh, a standard gray material so you can see the edges better and uh, turn my wire color to black, okay? All right, so I'll show edges, and here we are with our dodecahedron on, in the scene. And uh, first step is to switch to faces and grab one of these engons. All right, then go to your select similar, and I have mine set to edge count, face areas, and topology. Okay, and uh, I recommend having all three of these. I don't know if they're if they're checked by default or not, but uh, you know, make note of that. And that's what I use for most of my similar selections, and it works uh, really well. So, all right, so select similar, and you have all of them. And uh, the next step is just to extrude and uh, in. For this tutorial, I, I won't be modeling to scale. However, if you're designing a lamp or something in the real world, you'll obviously want to pay attention to your to your uh, units of measure. Okay, but in this case, we're just going to arbitrarily extrude and whatnot. So, extrude it to about that far, and then extrude again, just slightly. All right, and then without deselecting anything, grow the selection once. Control I to invert and delete. Okay, then you're left with this. Now you'll want to drop down to your border selection and Control A to select all. All right, these are all the borders and just cap them. All right, and that uh, makes them solid. All right, then go to face mode and select uh, <clears throat> all the perimeter uh, quads around one of the elements here. Okay, and once you have that selected, you can select similar again and grab all of them. Okay, and this is the portion of the tutorial where Mega Bevel will prove very useful. All right, so what we'll do now <coughs> is engage our Mega Bevel and we'll set it to by polygon. Okay, and we'll just pull some height out initially, uh, right about there, just for now. And then in the drop-down rollouts, we'll go to Stack, 
use global settings and we'll start with a count of three for now all right and then in the rotate pull down we'll use an x value of 30 so 30 degrees and then in the y value we'll we'll try 10 okay so this is what we'll have so far um, we may want to reduce our height slightly, add one more count. Okay, and the purpose here, you know, what we're trying to achieve here is just to get these faces lined up nicely in, in every direction here, in every area. So, uh, and I'll, tell, I'll show you why in a second. We may need to adjust our rotation and Let's see, we don't want to intersect anything, so we got to be careful about that. Let me back off once here and just increase the height a little bit. No, actually, four was better. Okay, so this looks pretty good right here. I think if we, I think we're lined up fairly well here. So we're going to fix uh, some of these. I know you're probably looking at this and saying, well, you have some edges that are uh, crossing don't worry about that right now just worry about the faces of matching here and lining up and I think we got that let's uh, let's add an edit poly modifier and we'll go to our face mode and we can control our shift bridge and to bring up the caddy if we need it and it looks like we will we'll add one extra segment in our bridge okay and accept that Okay, so this is the result so far. Okay, so now what we'll do here is we'll add a relax modifier on top of all of this, and that should that should uh, straighten out some of our intersections and our our issues with the uh, topology here. So let's add a relax, and as you can see, that uh, brilliantly uh, straightens out some of this uh, the error issues that we had there. Okay, and we'll increase it maybe. One iteration is actually pretty good. Two is, is too thin. So one iteration. Uh, and then uh, this should be the result. Okay. All right, so we'll collapse this down. All right, so we have basic, uh, basic uh, interlinking star shape here, uh, but we need to take it further. And what we want is we want to select all of the outer faces on the object because the next steps will be easier to work with a, uh, uh, a surface than it will be a solid model. So if we just select all of these outer faces and delete the rest, we'll have just a single-sided surface to continue working on and it will be easier than working with a solid object. So what we're going to do is to grab all of these outer faces and not the interior ones. One easy way to do that is to go into face mode and select all of these polygons that make up uh, the border of this uh, this hole here. Okay, and choose select similar to grab them all. All right, and then go ahead and delete the, those border polygons. So what that leaves you with are two, uh, two surfaces, two elements facing in the opposite directions that aren't connected. So knowing this, we could switch to element mode and just grab that inner element and delete it. And then that leaves us with all of the, uh, the outside facing polygons that we want to work with here, okay? Instead of having to go and, and, and select each poly, you know, selecting all of these polygons, yeah, since we have, uh, you know, so many different uh, directions and so many different, uh, you know, there's an end gun here, so you can't get all the loops. It would have been a little bit more difficult doing it, uh, doing it by hand. Okay, so now that we have this, um, what we want to do next is uh, make this shape round. All right, so uh, we're going to have to add some extra geometry through here in order to round these out because right now these end guns are going to remain flat even if we uh, 
you know, apply a spherical modifier to it. Um, there's nothing in here that's going to uh, to round out these these flat surfaces. So um, what we'll do here is we'll uh, select everything and then we'll just run a tessellate one time and that'll provide us with the uh, resolution necessary to uh, uh, to round out this shape okay so uh, with all with our new uh, edges running through we could go ahead now and uh, add a uh, spherify modifier okay if I could find it there it is all right and now with that added you can see we have a perfectly round object here or surface I should say okay all right so now this is looking a lot more like the uh, the uh, model that we have here all right so um, now that we have that we can we can collapse that at this point okay and um, if you were modeling this uh, to create the same object that I did which was a lamp or, or maybe you're gonna you know use it for another purpose um, you know, you you need you need a, to run something through the bottom of it as as a base or something like this. So uh, just keep that in mind if if you are doing that to you know look at your model face on from the bottom and decide if you're in a good position to add geometry geometry through there uh, realistically. And in this case, of course, we're we're directly facing one of these arms. Uh, that's not a good spot to run, you know, the base of a lamp or something through there. So, uh, you know, what we might want to do here is just to rotate it so that one of these uh, one of these end cons is actually facing dead on and uh, in the center here. All right, and that will allow us uh, to have a surface where we could, uh, you know, punch a hole through and then drive a cylinder up through there okay but for right now we're just going to worry about achieving the uh, the shape here and, and we we're 90 percent there as you can see all right so the next thing I did here was uh, to get that object was just add a, uh, a shell modifier again for, for thickness um, we're just eyeballing it here but you know if you're modeling to uh, scale you want to pay attention to the amount here um, but for now, we're just going to eyeball it, and, and whatever looks good is fine. And I think right about there is okay. So this is it so far. And uh, what you can do at this point before we subdivide uh, and throw a turbo smooth on here is probably chamfer some of these edges. Uh, and that, that should make it look better. It'll catch highlights better and stuff on it, so more realistically. All right, so we'll go ahead and collapse the uh, shell modifier down and convert to poly again so we can continue working. All right, we'll go to our edge mode and we'll select all of these uh, border edges. All right, so just start grabbing those. And also on the inside, you know, let me see. Let's select similar here. Yeah, we'll need the... Uh, We'll need to grab the inside ones as well. All right, so you only have to—you really only have to uh, worry about grabbing. Oops, grabbing one of these. But uh, there. Okay, so with that selected, we'll just. Uh, select similar and we should have them all selected what, what did i grab an extra edge there oh it looks like i did just be careful when you're working in close like that that you don't grab an edge that you really don't want to grab like i just did or you'll have a problem let me see let's try it again yeah that that did it so i must have had an extra edge selected all right so now that we have all those selected we'll just go ahead and chamfer them slightly okay and uh, that should be good enough. All right. And if you have quad uh, chamfering, that's probably a better way to go. So we'll throw a quad chamfer on there and we'll quad intersections and ends. And we'll just bring it to 
bring it to a size that we're happy with. All right about there is good. All right, so with the edges all chamfered, we can go ahead and throw a turbo smooth on top. And there it is. All right, so with a turbo smooth on top, you're going to have a little bit of uh, added geometry, obviously, but uh, the result is going to be much uh, cleaner. All right, so if we look at it this way, and we could probably increase increase our chamfer size a little bit. So there we go. All right, so that's how to get this shape, and I uh, hope this was useful to you. All right, so um, if you have any questions or uh, if I wasn't clear on something here, you know, feel free to leave a comment. Uh, and uh, definitely grab that uh, Mega Bevel if you don't already have it because it's a terrific uh, free plugin. So very handy for stuff like this. All right. Well, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time. Bye.